on my journey, what did I say? About 16 years, or even before that, I've used digestive enzymes. None of them worked. And I'd pop them. I'd say, well, maybe I'm not taking enough. So I'd like put a whole handful in and it still wouldn't make a difference. I tried your Holozyme and it is by far the best enzyme product I have ever tried. And my gut is hard to please. So that <laughs> is a lot. And so what I want to do is, is talk about this supplement, but also how someone with leaky gut is going to benefit from digestive enzymes and what are the differences between other digestive enzymes out there and why they weren't working for me. Yeah. There's so many questions in there. So <laughs> we'll, we'll need three hours. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. We'll, we'll try our best here. So, um, Unfortunately, your experience was my experience too. And I think it's like probably 99 out of 100 listeners of this show, which is that gastroenterologists in Western medicine give digestive enzymes as well as like every, like every healthcare provider learns about digestive enzymes, about their importance, about how it doesn't matter what diet you eat. If you're not breaking that diet down into usable nutrients, your body is going to suffer. It's going to be malnourished. You're going to lose micronutrients and you're going to potentially set up the conditions for a dysbiotic microbiome would be my opinion. So they all know about it. And most of them come fired up out of school to, you know, prescribe or recommend enzymes or whatever. And then exactly what you said happens is they, at some point they're just like, this is not working in the real world. What is going on? And so I, that happened to me as well. Um, and remember I had a bunch of IBS related bloating, uh, amongst a mother, a lot of other things. And so I really, everywhere I went, it was like, this should make bloating go away. Why, why is this not working? And so, um, I've spent a lot of years contemplating this and trying to figure it out. And what, what it's come down to is, is, a is a few things. Number one is that the, the majority of enzymes on the market are built with just poor product build. Like they just don't understand. The, the first thing to comprehend is that number one, we can't really test for our, how much enzymes we're making. We can only really test like a little bit for pancreatic enzyme sufficiency through elastase. Um, but we also have brush border enzymes. And these are very special enzymes that help break down plant matter and carbohydrates. And then we have microbiome enzymes. Actually, our lactobacillus species and other species give off all these cool, crazy enzymes that you'll find in the research are linked to like lowering gas and cramping and things like this. And so we can't test for it. That's an issue. Number two, a lot of uh, enzymes in the market don't include microbiome enzymes, brush border enzymes, and then pancreatic enzymes. And so right there, you're kind of setting up for failure. And then the third big thing is that um, they need cofactors. They need minerals to really perform at their best, the enzymes do. And so that was kind of the big breakthrough for me that I found a, uh, a scientific researcher who had figured this out. He had gotten a patent on it. And, um, I'm a sucker for everything. So like, if you're like, Hey, you know, acai berry will, you know, heal you. I will, I'll chug it. I'll try it. I'll, I'll give it a go. Um, so with this guy, I did the same thing. I always do. I'm like, sure, man, I'll buy your stuff. Let's see if it works. This is one of the rare cases where I was like, Holy cow, maybe he's had the missing component of digestive enzymes with these other ones that I've been working on. And sure enough, that seems to be the key. Um, it's It was for me and it has been for a lot of people. So those missing cofactors, say someone is taking those minerals separately, um, but maybe at a different time of day, is there something magical about actually taking them at the time that you're taking the enzymes and your food? Yeah, yeah, there is. So um, basically enzymes are... Uh, in some inactive form, if they weren't, they would like eat our pancreas up or they would eat our intestines up, right? But they, the body is very intelligent and it has to have ways to inactivate them and then activate them. And one of them is through cofactors. Uh, the other two are pH and temperature. And so if you want like the best uh, activity and power and efficiency from your enzymes you currently have, taking like a, like a multi-mineral complex around your food and with your food is going to give you the best option because basically there will be abundance of fuel. Think about a forest fire. Um, if you have 
down trees and, and, and like stuff to burn, the fire can rage for a really long time. But if you remove, if you remove those trees and stuff, like it, it, it might not die out, but it's not going to be as raging and as, as, you know, intense. Same thing is true kind of with these enzymes. Like there could be a lot of enzymes, but their activity could be really muted. If you introduce a bunch of minerals, then they can kind of really go at it and go after your food. So how do you know how much to take? Well, um, I mean, there's a patent, which is what we licensed. And so that's what we built into Holozyme, which is our enzyme. Uh, if you weren't going to do that, I would say get one of those um, like multi-mineral uh, uh, liquid. Like they have like oh, this. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I was, can, I meant how much, how would you know how much oh. of the Holozyme you would take with meals? So here's the thing. Like this isn't like the second biggest issue from product design. Uh, when it comes to enzymes that again is not being talked about from your gastroenterologist all the way down to your health coach, which is that dose is extremely variable to the, to the person. And there's no real upper limit. There's no real toxicity to digestive enzymes. There's no, nothing bad happens if you take too many. Um, so obviously if you're concerned, if you're pregnant, talk to your provider, things like that. But if you're being an adult, there's not a real upper limit based on what the literature says. And so what I mean by that is your, what we just talked about, your state of stress, your state of EMFs, if there's mold in your house, if you're dealing with a parasite or whatever, um, you might need three capsules, four capsules, six capsules, maybe more per meal to really break down that food. And what I want to do is give people the, the confidence that whatever brand, whether it's our brand or anybody else's brand, this is universally true. You can start upping them. Like if you're having bloating, if you're having food undigested in your stool, if you're having uh, stools that are too soft or, you know, too liquidy or, or too hard and too constipated, like start upping and you have an enzyme, whatever brand it is, start today with two or three or four or five and, and just start playing around. Um, I'm not saying it will work because the product design might be missing the things I talked about. So it may never work for you, but it's worth a shot since you got it in the house today. Okay. And so I'm assuming you would recommend that if someone's having a ribeye steak, they might need a little more versus a protein shake. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. So it, it would go along with just a common sense as far as that goes. I love the fact that you can't overdo it. And so that gives people that um, freedom to test on themselves and everyone's different and you might need more for the same meal next week than you do this week because it's all changing and, and there's so many different factors that are going into it. So, so I just want to, I want to double click on that real quick. Um, what you just said is the key to like, if you want to go to the next level as like, whether you're the head of the household or you hold health, like let's say like you, in your case, I'm going to assume that as mom, you kind of like are not necessarily dosing everybody, but you're kind of keeping everybody uh, dosed up on their health and kind of taking care of everybody's health. If you know that if you're entering into stressful times, like maybe you're going on, on a, a, like, I don't know, maybe like it's a softball weekend or a soccer weekend or something like that, where everybody's outside of their routines the food is not as controlled. Um, the environment's stressful due to the scheduling and everything. Like that is the time to have extra enzymes around. That is the time to, uh, you know, start to play, especially with this stuff. Um, cause you can almost assume whenever you get stressed out, your digestion is going to be worse. And that's just due to your nervous system. Your nervous system has mo mainly two modes, sympathetic and parasympathetic. Parasympathetic is where you want to be for digestion. And if you're sympathetic, meaning you're rushed, you're stressed, your body does not allow as much stomach acid to be made. It doesn't allow as much enzymes to be made. And so in general, digestion, like you should expect more bloating. You should expect more IBS-like symptoms on any time you're stressed, whether it's travel or or, you know, maybe the in-laws have just come to visit, something like that. Well, especially after the holidays, as we're talking, I'm sure everyone can, um, you know, identify with that. What we do as a family is we pray at the table. And there's a reason that around the globe, regardless of your beliefs, people pray before they eat. And it's to get into that parasympathetic mode, calm down, and you actually feel your body go, 
oh, and let's just actually focus on the food. I've I've tried to instill in my kids, don't be eating in your car, don't be just rushing through it. And this is interesting, Stephen, is my college um, freshman daughter has had issues with gloating forever since she was a little girl. And we're, we've tried this and that and this and that. And um, here she is in college now, away from my organic, beautiful, amazing food. And she's trying to eat clean as much as she can, but you know how that goes. And she goes, mom, I'm feeling better. And I said, well, what do you think it is? Because I know you're not taking more supplements and I know the <laughs> food isn't any better. She goes, I'm actually more intentional with my eating. Mm. And I said, ta-da, you know, that's, it's all about the stress and what you're creating and, and think about the, the tigers and the lions when they're, they're fasting as they're running and going after their, their kill. And then it's time to slow down and actually relax and then eat. Um, so there's that, that, that fasting period and however people incorporate it, that into their lives. And then this, this part of when you are eating, it's intentional and make it, make it enjoyable, make it positive, make it stress-free. You know, if it's stressful, if you're in a stressful situation, maybe don't eat, maybe wait until you yeah. get to a place where you can actually eat properly. So I, I love the Holozyme and I can tell you that this is the first one. I've never um, promoted an enzyme ever before. And you would think that with my business and my own gut issues that I would have by now, I, I haven't because I haven't found one that I absolutely love. And this is the first one that works for me.